One of the most common questions we get around here is about breakout trades. We're going to give you three reasons to watch for when you're trading a breakout trade as to why it might fail. More often than not, uh, especially nowadays, you get breakout trades. They go and then they come back and then they test the level and then they might come right back down and fail. So let's go, guys. Here comes three reasons as to why breakouts may fail. I always like to give extreme examples to make a point. So I'm going to use maybe the most extreme example I could find today because I think it really illustrates the point as well uh, as possible. Um, you know, Open Door actually had, it, it had gapped up on earnings, right? So this is the chart you're looking at. I understand you're going to see the end result of it. If you look at the flush that the market had down here and then you were gapping up on a decent earnings report and you can see the high on the week is sitting here at about 820. Uh, you had the high yesterday on that ridiculous just charge uh, at the end of the day there. Uh, you had it making that same top at 820. You had a pre-market high as well. And all three of these things just lining up and a decent response to the earnings. You got yourselves a night nice consolidation break. It's a double or triple top, depending on how you want to look at it. We had a hard bottom last week as well. Everything is lining up, but you do not want to punch long into overhead resistance. And that's why we always say when in doubt, zoom out. Because when I do this and zoom just a little bit further on the chart. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, does, this, does that look just as good to you? Nah, not really, because when it tried to break out of this same range last time, which was gapping into it, it broke, tested up into 840, let alone 870, let alone 9 even, uh, and failed abjectly, and it ran away from that price. So when you're looking at that breakout, it looks a heck of a lot different when you're not clearing through this level that it had rejected just a couple of weeks ago. So it looks fine on the higher time frame. As a matter of fact, it actually saved me like 30 cents because I bought the dip in here. I was going to have a 790 stop no matter what, and I stopped it out. But instead of paying up for the break, I actually took the consolidation, and then you see it stopped, halted to the downside when it rejected that breakout. But don't punch long into overhead resistance, when in doubt, zoom out. So I like that, tip number one, when in doubt, zoom out. I'm gonna talk about time of day breaks, man, and this is when breakouts don't work. And I'm gonna say time of day, right? And for me, that's gonna be at the open. I mean, at the close, whatever. Hopefully you're not playing breakouts at the close as the market's about to close. But how about time of day? I've really started to, you know, wake up to the idea that it's been so volatile right now in this market that if you're going to sit there and try to make plays, give yourselves some levels that you can trust. Do not make a play on a breakout in the first five or 10 minutes because the market could break the other way on you and then you're going to get absolutely destroyed, especially if you're in the tech names. I have an example here today with AMD. Normally, we would take pre-market high, which would be right in the year 94.50, or pre-market low breaks, right? Those have been trades that people say, hey, the stock is breaking out. Well, what do you mean by breaking out? It's breaking its range. So that's what we mean. So when you're talking about a pre-market range here, look what happens in the first minute. Uh, AMD opens up right here. It opens up high. So if you take this breakout at 94.50, you'd punch long right now, but it only goes up 50 cents. On a $95 stock, unless you're scalping and you're really quick, remember the market is nuts at the open, that's going to be up there for 50 cents. That's fine if you take it. But then look, the NASDAQ completely stops on a dime and turns around on you. Then it goes right back down to these pre-market bottoms, which is $93. So if you took this breakout at $94.50, the maximum you would have had today, and sure, I'm cherry picking, but I can go back and show you numerous days, and this is what, this is up to you watching this, go back and look and say, how do these stocks work off the open? Well, that's there's a 50 cent win. If you hold it all the way to the bottom, and again, you probably get out when it breaks the bottoms, right? So that bottom right there would have given you a 93 out. So you'd actually would have lost a dollar 50 there, right? And then you'd be kicking yourself because it actually goes up the rest of the day. So for me, it's like, wait for these breakouts. Just the same way. If you're thinking short here today and you say, hey, once we break this bottom range, I'm going to go short. There's this is the pre-market, right? So if you go short once we break 93, look how low this goes. 92.70, you lose again on that trade. So you would lose on the long break, lose on the bottom break, but if you just waited for levels to develop throughout the day, then you might have been able to see bottom there, bottom there, bottom there. It bottomed three times. Then you can take that trade to the upside because it's given you a bottom. And just like right here, there's the top, there's the top again. Wait, if you just 
wait to 10 o'clock, look how good this breakout is. You take the breakout of 95, and then you don't even look back. You, don't, you can't even lose on that trade all the way to the upside. So, hey, that's my idea. Time of day, Brandon. I love that, and I'll piggyback on that time of day idea and add another ingredient here, and that is volume, guys. There has to be volume behind the move, especially during the midday to make this uh, a profitable trade. I'm going to pick on Lucid here today because there's a couple of great examples from today uh, that we can kind of highlight here. I just highlighted the pre-market high uh, that it tested twice here and failed at both times after that flush off the open. So we get the very uh, aggressive market move back to the upside. Lucid looks great, comes back to pre-market highs, even breaks this level. But look what's happening down here. Nothing. No participation. There's maybe one green candle there on the way up, and then the rest are mostly selling. And it comes up again, tests it again, uh, fails again, because no volume. There's no volume behind the trade. So make sure there's participation in the move that you're seeing in the direction you're seeing before you jump in. Uh, there was a little move here that I wanted to highlight as well during the midday. So we had this tight consolidation uh, during the midday against 1820, which was the high it tested it twice and failed. Uh, I wanted to highlight this because there was a volume spike on the initial break, but look what happens immediately after that. So even if you take the trade, you get above that level, if volume dies off immediately and it just starts chopping around just above the level, that's an indication we might come back below the level immediately. So instantly you're out of the trade. If you're taking a breakout trade, it just has to go. Immediately has to go and there has to be volume behind that. So three good points there, guys, on what to watch for to make sure your breakouts don't fail.